Hey girl, hey, welcome back to another regular black girl vlog. It is Dominique. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back, girl. Um, today is Sunday, so we are on our way to the house of the Lord. I did not go to church last Sunday. I told you guys in the last vlog because the Panthers and the Falcons were playing and it was just traffic was going to be crazy. So I skipped out on church and I didn't give you guys a sermon summary because the sermons I was watching just wasn't doing it for me so i'm excited to be going back to church today and i'm hopeful um that i'm gonna get me a good word I, I i know i'm gonna get me a good word so i wanted to open up the vlog it's a fresh start to a new week um don't really have any plans after church today might go get some brunch we shall see um but let me show you my ootd haven't done an ootd in a while so let's see what i'm wearing to church hold on one second Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm going to start using my microphone. I just try to get it, but it's not charged. So I'm going to start because I think the quality will be better and I won't have to talk as loud. But OOTD, going to church. I have on this crop jacket I got from Zara uh, maybe last year or the year before. I love it for days like today. I think the high is going to be like 75, but it's morning right now. And you know when you're in the shade, it'll be cool. We're at that weird time of the year where it's cold in the morning cold in the evening hot during the middle of the day we don't really get a, a a real fall so i just wanted something in my arms plus going into church sometimes it's cold in church so this is something lightweight to keep me from being super cold this striped shirt is a men's shirt from h&m um just t-shirt to throw on and then i have on my favorite slacks <laughs> these are some of the slacks i got from zara uh last year um you've seen these a couple of vlogs ago i always uh when i was in texas at the sarah jakes conference so um yeah just super chill super cute i think i probably gonna wear my golden gooses i don't have shoes on right now i have them back there but i'm so tired of wearing them shoes i cannot wait to give me some fall sneakers i just don't know what i want to get i'm not really a sneaker girl but i need some shoes other than them golden gooses they tired of me and I'm tired of them. But they go with everything. So more than likely, that's what I'm gonna put on. And I'm carrying my handy dandy Glamaholic in the green. So this is today's OOTD. Again, don't know what we're getting into after church, but come along, come along. I might have a summer summary sooner than we think. I'm hoping that today's good. I, I need a good word. I need a good word. In these vlogs, y'all gonna see me at a restaurant every time. But I'm at my one of my favorite restaurants in Charlotte, the Crunkleton. Best drinks. Like you want a good espresso martini? Get it with a tequila reposado instead of the vodka. They gonna get you right. Best. I, I will. I will argue. Best martinis in Charlotte. Best espresso martini in Charlotte. They never stirred me wrong. And we're at brunch. Um, I ordered the grilled sausage, egg, and cheese. They have a new fall menu and some cheese grits. I really wanted the BLT, but it's not on the menu anymore for the fall. So um, we're getting a, a sausage. You can't never go wrong with a sausage, egg, and cheese. If they mess up a sausage, egg, and cheese, then you don't need to be eating there. But they got good food. Um, Y'all saw, I, no, I don't think I put that in the vlog. I came here for a monthly girls' night, maybe like last month, I think that was. But um, brunch is A1. So yeah, cheers. Don't look at my nails. I'm gonna get them done. I'm gonna get them done later. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to touch my grits. Hey girl, what the day is? It's Tuesday. Y'all know that city girl me. I'll try to insert it if I can find it. If not, that's a city girl reference. Um, but anyway, happy Tuesday. We left off on Sunday at the Crunkleton. I told you how good it is. The Crunkleton, I think, is definitely one of my favorite Charlotte restaurants. It's not like, I don't know. Like, I, I just think it's good. I don't, like, I I, I will always be down to go to the Crunkleton. Definitely the brunch. The brunch over the dinner, 
Um, the brunch is just A1. So we did that. Um, then definitely had the itis. Definitely had the itis on Sunday. So went back to the house, knocked out, um, and then was just forced to watch football for the rest of the Sunday. So you guys have not missed anything. Um, just got off of work, but I just opened up an ASOS package, y'all. I am looking to add some pieces to my fall wardrobe. I really just need to do an inventory. I did this last year, do an inventory of what I have and try to put some outfits together because I'm finding there's a lot of things that I want to buy. And luckily for me, I think it's God telling me everything that I've been wanting is sold out for the most part. Like I'll go something, it'll be a two piece set and I'll be like, Ooh, this is cute. And then they won't have my size in the shirt or they won't have my size in the bottoms or it'll be pre-order or something. It's just, I ain't been able to find nothing, but I did see um, a girl on Instagram post this top and this bottom from ASOS and I just got the package. So I tried it on. I was like, let me show my people what, what we just got in the mail. So let me put you guys down. Okay. So this shirt is like an asymmetrical. It goes off your shoulder a little bit. I seen this on, I can't think her name is Eddie. Eddie Eliz or Idolize or something like that. She has a uh, eyewear brand, but she wore this really cute, not together. I mean, I could wear this together. It ain't nothing wrong with it, like with some sneakers or something, but this isn't why I bought it. But cute shirt, just another, uh, a play on a, a tee, but give you a little bit of zhuzh with your tee, you know, because I love a t-shirt. Um, but it gives you just like a little bit of something like, oh, she got a little shoulder out. <laughs> and then these jeans, I really like these. I could wear them baggy like this. Um, I think I got like a 10 in these, but let me find out I'm getting a little slim, a little slim thick. Um, uh, they are a little baggy, but I don't think I want to send them back. They were only $30. I don't want to send them back. I think I might just get them tailored because that looks so good if I get the waist taken in. And I think I think I know and I've seen a lot of fashion influencers say the key to making your clothes look good is to get them tailored to your body. So you guys, me, we be looking for the perfect jeans, not to say that they don't exist, but I think you have to get them a little bit too big when they fit certain places and then get them tailored to your waist. Because like right now, these are, these are baggy, but if I get, if I just pull them up here and I get that waist taken in. Y'all see what a difference that made? Like, okay, this is it. And I could, like I said, I could wear them like this, like with another tee or something baggy. But I think I'm going to get them just taken in a smidge. And that's cute. These are like a cargo. I hope you guys can see them all. Let me pull you down some more. These are like cargos. Um, They come with like... I know old people be thinking we crazy. We went from having rips and clothes to clothes that look dirty on purpose, but <laughs> they have like scuffs on them. Can you guys see that? Uh, uh. They have like, look like you've been playing in dirt a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I thought they were cute. Um, They do got a couple rips in them. They got like this little handle right here. Nobody pulling your pants, but it's just, you know, it's just cute. Um, They ain't doing nothing for the butt right now, but when I get their waist taken in, they might. Um, I just thought they were cute. Cute to have, cute pair of different jeans, have nothing like this. Um, so I thought they were cute. Again, I could wear it like this with some sneakers, but that wasn't the purpose of buying them. And I've been itching to do like a haul or something, but I think before I overindulge and just have a whole bunch of clothes, I'm gonna see what I have, see what I need in my wardrobe, see what I can wear for a couple seasons, um, what I don't have, what's missing, and then order like that because I don't just wanna be spending money. I asked the Lord to help me with my finances and I just, I still just buying stuff. So I think that, that's why I haven't been able to get some of the stuff I want because it's like, no, you said you asked for this. So I'm helping you be obedient. No, don't just be buying all this stuff. Buy what you need. Like you can look cute with what you got in your closet. That's, that's what I'm assuming is happening. Yeah. Uh, another thing, I've been wearing my glasses more lately, guys. I need to do better. If you see me on these vlogs without my glasses, say something, do something. My vision has gotten progressively worse over the years. Um, and I've been supposed to wear gl glasses since I was a kid and I'm just childish and don't be feeling like it go with every outfit. It look cute with this shirt and my bun up, but, um, I don't be feeling like glasses go with every outfit. So I want to get a couple different frames. I only have prescription in one eye cause I only got... My left eye is bad. 
No, like all jokes stop. My left eye is bad. I cannot see nothing. If I cover up my right eye, God forbid something happens to my right eye, I'm doomed because I cannot see out my left eye for real. And so <laughs> I want to get my prescription put into a, like a couple different frames just so I can have multiple frames. Because sometimes, like I said, I don't be feeling like glasses go with everything. But these, I really love them. They were shades and I got my lenses put in them. They're Versace. Let me tell you guys. I wasn't wearing them when I first got them because this metal, whatever this is, hurts so bad. It gives me a headache. But I ordered these little socks. <laughs> Don't look at my nails. I, Y'all, I'm getting my nails done. I think I'm going to soak these off and try to do them myself. They look so bad. I thought I had like, my sister was like, oh, you can you can give that another week. Like I was going to get them done on Saturday. And she was like, oh, you got another week. And I'm like, you know what? I do. The next morning, it looked like. I didn't have these nails on for three months. But <laughs> yeah, these little socks, um, they're not called socks, but I'll link them below. Um, these, if you have this type of wire frame and you get headaches from your glasses, these are a lifesaver. I kid you not. I just bought them on a whim, like not thinking it was really going to work. And um, they have saved my life. I do not get headaches anymore in my glasses. And they used to give me a really bad headache because they're not squeezing, but this wire just being right there on the back of your ear for hours it just was a no bueno so these have changed the game for me um and if you're like me and your glasses are like this and it gives you a headache you need to check them out they also go with my glasses because of the black frame um it kind of looked like they're made like that but it's really just uh gold all the way down and you just slide them on easy peasy Easy peasy. But yeah, I'm trying to wear my glasses more often. I'm going to get some other ones. Um, now, if you see me here and there in the vlog, don't shoot me. Like, I I might not have them on all the time, but we're trying to do better. So, see something. See, what did I say? If you see something, say something. If you don't see me with my glasses, don't say something. But yeah, y'all. I'm going to take this clothes off. I'm keeping both items. I think I like this because I can wear this shirt with several different things. I can wear these jeans several different ways. So, I think these are two good buys. Um, keeping both of these, I'm about to take them off, put them probably on my rack. I'm going to part, start putting my new stuff on my rack. If it don't make my room look junky, cause I'm very, I'm not gonna say OCD, a little particular about the way that my room and stuff is. So I got this wardrobe rack, but it's only really for decoration. But anyway, I'm about to take this off, get ready for the gym. Um, and yeah, we'll check back in later. I said I was going to the gym, which I am, but somebody got me playing at home nail tech. So we about to get her nails right. We already, Neek, if you're watching, I got my OPI. So we buffed her nails, we fouled and whatever. And then I'm using this. This is the dehydrator. My girl Neek is a nail tech and she put me on the professional products. This is the primer that we're about to use. I'm gonna do my own at some point. And then this is the top coat. We also got our D&D. She's gonna use the color, what's this? 314. Oh, I don't got no name on it. I'm breathing hard. I just came up them steps. She don't want you breathing hard. I just walked up them steps. <laughs> dust till dawn. We're gonna use dust till dawn. So yeah, we're about to do these nails. I don't know if y'all can see. <laughs> y'all y'all think I play I'm a fish y'all see my drill we got the little UV light earth that's how they do right warm it up that's how the lady do right now I'm like, girl uh... Some decals. Some decals. Something for something for designs. <laughs> Going too far. We ain't doing no design. You better get this this solid color. Yeah, Vegas can't be choosing. Because I'm sure we're big. Are you sure this one's your color? You sure? The finals? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's cute, but I just want to make sure you were sure. I mean, if you put it on that now. You can't take it off. 
But I, I get summer colors year round. I ain't no rules in my life. My world. Yes. That's what's wrong with people. No, that's your life. Just in your head. You or me, one of those two. Or both. <laughs> so we're finished. I did. Let's see. Let's see if you can see. Ooh, nails. I mean, bones cracking. Bones cracking. This is what I tell you the color was. This is Dust Till Dawn. Dust Till Dawn. So it's like, you know, a little fall vibe. Um, and we're going to finish up with some cuticle oil. Make sure you add that cuticle oil. Yeah, that doesn't look like much to me. I got some of my first though, ain't it? Coconut oil. Oh, that's on the hair, isn't it? I'm gonna touch it. Oh, they be going too. Mm -hmm. I got it down pat now. I've been watching. <laughs> I've been watching. Very cute. Oh my god. So Zell Cash App. I don't got Zell, actually. Yeah, so I'm finished with Sis Nails. If you need an appointment, my booking info will be in the description box below. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'm only doing her nails, my nails. <laughs> Not that good yet, but they they look pretty darn good. Like she got her nails done. Um, I'm a gel manicure maybe like a month ago, and her nails chipped up like within three days. The last time I did her nails. We didn't have that problem, but she had to give her um, nail beds a break too, like me, but I didn't go super break. I still had to put me some tips on because I can't walk around with nothing, but I'm probably, that said, since I just did hers, going to, when I go get my pedicure later this week, going to just get them to soak these off and do them myself. Save me a coin. If you know, you know. Nails is high, and I don't want to pay for myself. Y'all. I really need to stay off of Amazon. I find something on Amazon every day that I need. Amazon tells me kind of like Target what I need. And today I had the bright idea of ordering this. This is something I think is essential. Um, I've never used it before, but I could see how it could come in handy. So I got on there once I got this bright idea today. And this is what I ordered. Poopery. <laughs> I ordered a three pack. It was like $23 for a three pack. Um, they're nice size bottles. They're travel size. Um, and it says you have 70 uses. So if you don't know what poopery is, you're supposed to spray before you go. Um, before you go number two. And so you spray in the toilet. It says you spray three to five times and then you do your business. And it ain't supposed to stink. And I just feel like, you know, when you be... Spending a night at people's house and you might have to go. This is something nice to have in your spending the night bag or your toiletry bag. Also, girls trips if you share in a room. Um, I seen somebody say on the airplane, never thought about that, but people be going on the airplane. <laughs> this is something good to have. I'm going to put one in our guest bathroom upstairs in the kitchen because that's where most of the people that come visit us use the bathroom and somebody might have to go and not want to say nothing and if it get the odor out sometimes you know air freshener just is a smell on top of the stank it don't it don't deodorize the stank it just be like oh somebody pooped and sprayed something in the air this is supposed to take it all up so we're going to test it out next time i have to poop tmi <laughs> I thought it was a nice buy. I don't know. Maybe I wasted my money. Let me know if you try poopery. They are all, this one is Original Citrus. This one is Royal Flush. And this one is Ship Happens. S-H-I-P. But honestly, they all smell like a little lemon minty. Like, they all got a lemon. One is supposed to be lemon, Berkmont, and lemongrass. One is supposed to be eucalyptus and spearmint. And one is supposed to be coconut frischka? and citrus but again they all pretty much smell lemony i thought it was a good buy to me i'm 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 working on my spending though like i haven't been doing bad my credit cards is paid down we doing good we doing good but i could do a little bit of something that's just kind of like 
and you know, like the highlight of my day. Just buy myself something. Also bought this. It's an electric lighter. I have been wanting one of these for so freaking long and just don't ever think to buy one. Like that's just never, like I'll see one on Instagram, see somebody lighting a candle and be like, I'm gonna get me one of those. And then I'll see somebody else do it and I'm like, I'm gonna get me one of those and never get it. But I ordered this and game changer. This thing was like, six dollars i think it come with a usb to charge it up so it's not battery operated love that because i don't be gotten time to be buying batteries and stuff just charge it and go um and i just lit my candle and it's so cool you just this is what it looks like if you hadn't seen one and you just flick it up this shows you how much battery you have and then you just press this power button right here press that button and that's the fire you just do like that and you put that onto your wick and your candle lit, your candle lit. And I like it because you know how sometimes like yesterday, my candle, I had a three wick candle, one of the wicks went out, right? And so I didn't have something like this that I could stick in and just relight that wick. And I couldn't stick my finger in it with a regular lighter because I was gonna burn myself. And then I couldn't turn it over and light it this way because all the wax, was gonna, it was just gonna be a disaster. So. I was like, I need something. And I didn't want the like, the the real lighter that you pull down, like, you know, like the little charcoal. I don't know what you, those lighters are really for, I guess candles. Um, I thought this was just better. This is better. It, it You still have to be safe because while this is up, long as you press this button, that little thing will ignite. And I mean, if you got it on a cover, you got it on your hair, you got it on something, it will catch whatever it is on fire. It don't just work on wicks. So as long as that shield is pulled down, you're good to go. Um, I ordered some more stuff from Amazon, but that ain't came in yet. So we'll save that for another day. I also, I told y'all I want me some fall pieces. I narrowed my stuff down. I got a couple things from ASOS coming and a couple things from Zara. I ain't buying nothing else. I got some boots coming. I got some sweaters coming, some two piece sets, some jeans. I feel like that should complete my, what I needed for my new fall, uh, stuff. And I'm just going to have to mix match the stuff that I bought last year. Last year I bought a, a lot of, um, different, sweaters and things like that um i got a lot of jackets last year so now that i got a few more new pieces to add in there i think my wardrobe is set for fall hope it is because i ain't trying to spend all my money i'm not trying to spend all my money but yeah i just want to hop on here real quick and show y'all my new my new things my oh my poopery and my lighter hey girls so we are finally about to go get our nails done i've been supposed to get my nails done since last weekend but uh said my sister said I could go another week so I listened to her and I went another week but it's today's the day I ordered this D&D &D, um nail color it is called cookie chips this is like brown I don't know if the camera's picking up like the true brown it's kind of like a coffee looking color I'm feeling the fall vibe so we're gonna do that I was going to just get my feet done and soak off my nails and do them myself because I did my sister's pretty darn good but um, I'm feeling like paying for convenience today and I think I'm just gonna soak these acrylics off, get a gel manicure and then next week or the week after when it's time for them to get done again, then I'm gonna do them myself because I just don't feel like coming back home and doing my nails, but my nails need to be done because we got a date night tonight. So we're going bowling later on. I haven't been bowling in so long. And the last time I went, I do believe I sucked. Um, so we're going to go to bowling tonight. And then we're going to, of course, get something to eat. Because if y'all don't realize from watching my vlogs, your girl can eat. Love to eat. Love that. So we're definitely going to go eat. Going to go bowling for a cute little date night. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably check back in a little bit later. Um, I got to figure out what I'm putting on because I want to look really cute. Um, so yeah, maybe when I start getting dressed or something, or maybe after I, after I get my nails and I'll, I'll check back in and show you my nails, but yeah, talk to you in a little bit. We're not going bowling. <laughs> hey girls, um, I have not checked back in since before I was going to get my nails done. These are the nails. They're kind of like um, mocha, chocolate. They're not chocolate. They're like mocha, coffee. Um, 
but yeah we just went to uh 800 degrees if you were in charlotte like i always say i don't know what other cities they got them in i do think they have them like chicago somewhere else great pizza great pizza we had the pizza in the truffle fire fries with uh uh like some cheese sauce mm -hmm. so so good and i got the drink the drink was called um pyt pretty pretty young thing because you know, I'm a pretty young thing. <laughs> she getting up in age, but she's still young to somebody. She young to, to this man. She young. Hmm. She clock it. What they say? Clock it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but we are, I think we're going to go see what the hookah spot is looking like. We don't feel like bowling. It sounded good, but we full. We worked out earlier today. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody about to go bowling. Ain't nobody feel like that. Um, so we're about to go see what the hookah spot looking like. We're going to ride by. If the hookah spot is too packed. We're going home, getting in the shower, and going to sleep. I, you ain't never got to worry about me not wanting to go to sleep. So, yeah. Um, we're about to have a car concert. I ain't trying to get copyrighted. So, just know the first song on our concert, car concert is Just Be a Man About It, Tony Braxton. That's my karaoke song. I'm going to sing you out the car. Probably not because it sounds good, but that's my song. But, yeah. I'll check back in a minute. Um, well, maybe not a minute. We'll see what the, what happens for tonight. If we go to the hookah spot, I'll blow a little hookah in y'all face. <laughs> Cause you know that's you know that's how us girls do. Um, we gotta do a little honorary blow in your face. Um, but if not, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, girls. It's uh quite some time later. Last we last we spoke. What did we do? It was date night on Friday. We did not end up going bowling. I think I told you guys that. Um, it sounded real good. But after we ate that pizza, um, we were like, yeah, no. So we stopped by the hookah spot, but it was, the vibes weren't there either. I think we were just ready to go home. So we stayed in there, had one drink, and then we were like, let's skedaddle. So it really wasn't anything to show you guys there. It was dead in there too. I think everybody um, <laughs> was having the same vibes on Friday and to, um, as my sister said, it's homecoming season. So I know it was Central's homecoming, Fayetteville State homecoming this weekend. So maybe a lot of people just weren't in the city, but that was okay. Um, I'd rather just go eat anyway and go home. So, um, next date night, I think we're going to do an activity. We're going to have fun. Um, and eat. We, we still don't very much eat. Eating, if you eating, gonna get done. Um, but I'm hopping on here today because we have some packages. I have a Zar haul, and I am gonna do a try on, but it's gonna be on the on the TikTok. So if you are not following me on TikTok yet, go do that right now, regular black girl on TikTok because we, you know, we're trying to do better on TikTok. We're being consistent. I've been doing my outfits of the day, but I'm gonna do a little haul. So. We have some Zara items. I told y'all um, I've been wanting to buy stuff for fall, um, but I wanted to make sure it was pieces that I could actually use in my closet. It wasn't just like, oh, this is cute. Let me buy this. Like, so um, I went ahead and pulled the trigger on some stuff, but I'm really, I got some stuff coming from ASOS next week. Um, after that, I'm not buying anything else. Like, I promise. Like, I should not promise. But I'm going to really try my darnest to not buy any other clothes because I have enough to mix match wear looks again in different ways like i should have enough i just need to buy i just needed to buy a few more things you know like every season you need a couple new items like just a couple so we're gonna get into that but first i do have an amazon package here um this is just a basic it's from the the pumi brand so if you know anything about Pumi, um, it's supposed to be the Skims Amazon dupe, um, well, Skims dupe from Amazon. Um, and I just needed some bases, kind of like that shirt I wore on Friday. Again, go to the TikTok. Um, but it was from a different brand. This is a tan one. And I really wanted it to be lighter than this because, oh no, I think it'll work. I bought this for those jeans that I tried on earlier in the vlog. It's a bodysuit. So it snaps. Of course, at the bottom, it's really, you can tell, the material is very soft, very stretchy. I got it in a medium, um, but you could tell, very good quality, basic. And I'm probably going to go get all the colors. You know, Pumi, um, 
stuff like that. The basics, they have black, they have white, they have cream, they have gray, they have all the colors. So I'll put the link in the description box below for these. Um, but yeah, I, I got them for those pants specifically. Specifically, um, I thought it was going to come this weekend. And if I went somewhere, I wanted to wear those pants. Um, cause I am going to get them tailored, but before I do that, I still can wear a baggy. So rambling, rambling, rambling. This is what I got that for. So cute, cute. Um, also I received a gift on Friday. Um, someone who thinks I'm very special bought me some sneakers and I, you know, I'm not a sneaker girl, but I be wanting sneakers and I love to see how other people style outfits with sneakers. So I've been looking for different pairs. I really want me some Sambas, y'all, some Sambas or some Gazelles, some type of Adidas. But every time I bought two pairs that were way too big. The other day I got my size, like now I know my size. I got them, I ordered them and a day later they sent me a refund talking about, I guess they were out of stock basically. Like somebody else must've been checking out at the same time. So, it's not meant for me to order them offline. I'm going to have to go in the store, and I'm never in the store. But I do want me some of those. Needless to say, though, um, because I've been wanting sneakers, someone surprised me with these. So, these are the Nike Vermeros. I think I'm saying that right. Vermero. This is what that looks like. Vermero. They're like cream and like a deeper cream. Super cute. I love these. Um don't know exactly how i'm going to style them yet but such a cute shoe and they have different um colorways with these too but this one's just a neutral i mean you can't go wrong with this shoe so yeah i thought that was such a sweet surprise gift mm -hmm. yes ma'am so that's that. Uh, and now on to the Zara. So this big box. Oh, let me, let me turn this way so you don't see no address. This is a big Zara box. And I think these are some boots. Let's rip it on open. This is how it comes. Okay, little dust bag Zara. And these are the boots. So cute. The heel isn't that high, but just some boots for like daytime outfits in the fall. Like you be having outfits like skirts or things you want to wear, but you don't want to wear like a high heel. I have some from Strut Shoe Bar, some uh, boots that are like this, but the heel is high. What is this? Um, this is uh, no vinyl or whatever. Um, super cute. I'm going to have to try them on to make sure they fit, but I love those. I absolutely love those. What do you guys think? Can you see? Cute, cute, cute. I'm going to try those on in a bit. But that's the first thing. Some boots. Again, fall staple. It's about to get cold. The temperature already dropped here. We got a storm on, what was that, Saturday um, night? And that bought, like, that bought the uh, temperature down. Like, the cold front. Throw this over here. You guys can't see that, I don't think. Can you see? I don't want you to see no junk over there. My room's pretty clean, but. And then this. First things first, we have, um, you know I love a set. I'm a set type of gal. Hold on, y'all. Let me make sure my face is clean, because I hate a whole bunch of junk. Um, but yeah, I am a set type of gal. And so, um, first things first, we have this. This is like a, what color is this y'all? It's like an orange, um, see if they put the color on here. I don't know, but it's supposed to be like a cashmere sweater, very cute fall color, like pumpkin. Is this pumpkin? It's a little bit deeper, darker than pumpkin, but very nice fall color, pretty with my nails. Um, so that's the shirt, and then this is the skirt. This look kind of big. This look kind of big. Um, I hope it's not itchy, because it's given that it might be itchy. 
<laughs> but I'm gonna try it on a minute. I think that is really cute. Could even wear it with those boots that I just showed you guys in a jacket. Um, I have other boots. I have combat boots. I have some brown boots. Like just a cute little fall outfit to put on. Thought that was very cute. Again, all this stuff I am gonna try on on TikTok, but I just want to do an unboxing with you guys. So all the content isn't like, you know, redundant. So if you want to see me try it on, maybe I'll add some clips in here, or maybe you just have to go over on TikTok. Um, I got a medium in both. So hopefully that fit. I definitely like to get mediums or larges for my chest because I can be a little busty. Um, my buddy ain't that big, but it's getting a little plump because I've been in the gym. So the medium, <laughs> the medium should work. Um, this is gorgeous. I don't have anything like this in my closet. Um, it's just a sweater. Um, I also got this in a medium. Look, it's a long sleeve sweater and it's coming out a little bit more brighter on camera than it is in person. It's like, it's definitely purple, but um, it's a little bit darker than it's showing up on camera. The camera is looking a little fuchsia, I want to say, but this is like definitely a, a, a beautiful purple. So also in a medium. Can wear this with jeans some loafers um like i said i was just trying to get pieces that i can wear it like several different ways um fall winter staples like unique sweaters i mean i can put a shirt up under this like a collar shirt you can do whatever with a sweater um so thought that was cute i got a candle over here i'm trying not to let my stuff catch on fire another one the same sweater i want to say is this one a v-neck oh no this one's a v-neck um, this one's like a lime green. Don't have anything like this either, but the same, same vibe. Um, I'm a very simple dresser. If y'all can't tell, I love just like simple, clean pieces. These pops of color are fun, but it's still just at the end of the day, a basic, a basic sweater. Um, but this color is beautiful. Don't have anything like this either. Um, and I love this. It feels good. Um, and again, same concept, can wear jeans, can wear um, some like, if you have like winter shorts, boots, uh, cute. We're, we're thinking of how we're going to style this as we're going. Got a medium in that one as well. Hopefully they're not too big, um, but I like oversized stuff. So if it is, that's all right. This one is, uh, I thought it was a sweater like those, but this feels more like a, like, like a crew neck sweatshirt, like a, crew neck pullover like I don't have a hood or anything but um it actually feels like I don't know if you guys recall like I have like these two pet two piece sets from Zara um there I got them in like a taupe color brown a white um I don't feel like getting them out of my closet but it feels like that material but I didn't see pants to go with this if it's some pants to go with this I'm gonna go back on there and get those this is also in a medium but it looks kind of huge this might be going back um just because I mean, it's a basic, but it's like a basic, like, do you need? Do you need this basic? And it was, I don't think I paid $45 for it. <laughs> I hope I didn't pay $45 for it. Um, but if I did, it's, it's going back. Cute, but not necessarily something I need. I thought it was a sweater like these. So we'll see. We'll see when I try it on. I might could use it. You could always use a, a, a crew neck or a sweatshirt or something. So put that in the we don't know pal. Um, these next two things are t-shirts now i always need t-shirts i always need like oh let me throw this on real quick a graphic tee but i never want to buy them because it's like why do i want to spend money on a t-shirt when i could be buying a jacket or some shoes or whatever but when i was on the website i'm like oh i have some slacks that would be cute with this i have some pants that will look so you just, i kind of got a plan ahead um i do anyway i'm not the I can dress, but I'm not a fashionista. So I kind of have to think of my outfits. I can't just be like, oh, boom, boom, boom. I got to kind of envision it a little bit. Um, So this first t-shirt, thought this was cute. Why does it look so big? It's a medium, but I guess it fits oversized. That's fine. But I, what did the thing even say? It says, uh, Venetia, Italy? got like a little boat or something i don't know but i got some like slacks that are like this color um and i thought that would be just like a cute outfit with some loafers and a light jacket for these days that it's not cold yet but it's fall it's chilly in the shade whatever so thought that was cute um 
yeah not much to it just a just a graphic tee um and also this one just another tee um oversized it just got 80 on it why i liked it i don't know but it'll be cute when i wear it <laughs> It'll be cute when I wear it. It's like distressed, like, um, yeah, just a, just, just a maybe. <laughs> I like it though, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and then the next two are two sets. Again, a set, hate to see me coming. It, these kind of look almost the same, but it's like, I mean, we're the same color pattern, but they're different. Um, so this is the top to this one. This is the jacket. We have some black and white stripes going down the side. You have a thick stripe and a skinnier stripe. Um, not very thick, so you definitely, I mean, I'm going to wear a shirt up under mine anyway, but you might want to wear like a thicker, like, white shirt up under or something, but that's the top, and it's cropped. Cute. Always need something like that. Always need um, just a throw-on outfit. And I love little track suits. This could be your airport outfit. This can be your running errands outfit. This can be a brunch, daytime. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, just like you would wear a Adidas track suit because that's kind of what the vibe is giving me. Um, and then this just has a thick stripe going down the side. Oh, I got the hotline. I don't know. I need to put on silent. Let me see. Um, I got a, what size did I get in the bottoms? Probably a medium. Uh... Smell a little funny. Like, not like somebody warm, kind of like a factory or something. A medium in the bottom and probably a medium in the top. Yeah, medium in both. So, that's cute. Pleased with those. And then, like I said, the same colorway but different. So, that top just had the stripes going down the side and it's all black. This one is black and white as well, but the stripes are going across. And we got some beige in here. Oh, might look cute with my new sneakers. Would you look at that? Um, yeah. So, stripe going across the front. It's also the same in the back. Um, got that in a medium. And then, actually, did I get the same pants twice? Okay, pause for the calls. These pants go with this. So you see it's cream and white. These are cream going down the side. Cream going down the side to match like this cream right here. And then these are the pants that go with that because you know we have like the double stripe going down the side. They kind of look the same, but they're not. So yeah. Yeah, my sister might tell me I don't need both of those. We'll see. Well, I have to always consult with her, but they're a little bit different. They're a little bit different. So I think I think I've used both. The only thing that I could send back that I would want to send back <laughs> is that orange. But am I really gonna send back one thing? Probably not. But then again, if it was forty-five dollars, that's something else I could have. So we'll see. We'll see. I have to consult with the, the stylist upstairs whenever she awakes from her slumber. So. Yeah, y'all. That's that's my um uh Zara haul for today. Um, I'm pleased. That was like twelve things. We won't discuss how much it cost. Um, but as long as afterpay is around, we don't gotta discuss how much it cost because <laughs> it doesn't matter. I didn't pay for all of it at one time. But yeah, that's that. I do want to get into the sermon summary. So let me put this stuff up and then we're gonna we're gonna chat. One moment. Oh. Okay, we're back. I just realized I chipped the nail. Darn. But um, I had to clean that mess up because I wasn't going to be able to think straight. But sermon summary. Didn't go to church yesterday. Um, but I have the summary from... My bad. I have the summary from the week before. And I was going to give you guys this early in the vlog. But I really had to kind of sit with it for a little bit. Because I had some like... Um, some... What's the word I'm going to look for? I don't know. As I explained the summary, I'm going to tell you, I guess, what I felt was wrong with it or what I wasn't connecting with. I don't know the word I'm trying to look for, but as I left church and throughout the week, I'm like, good word, great word. But I'm like, I just don't, I don't know. So look, 
we are in a series called Watch the Throne. And PB was at church. <laughs> and this sermon of the series was called Two Truths and a Lie. So he opened up the um, sermon playing the game. It's an icebreaker. Um, I've played it a lot of times of like onboarding or when you're first um, getting a job and like it's like an icebreaker. And so it's like you tell two truths about yourself and a lie. And typically they're all supposed to sound like outlandish so nobody can tell what the lie is. So you'll say, um, my kids was, I never had Chick-fil-A sauce. Um, I once stole a bottle of perfume out of Macy's and he always talks about he used to work at Macy's. So he's like, okay, maybe that's true. Um, and then um, his third one was, uh, I once performed with new kids on the block. So it's like, make them either all outlandish or make them all somewhat believable so no one can detect the lie um and so uh we played that and he just had you raise your hand like whatever you um thought was the truth what you thought was a lie and the lie was he's never had chick-fil-a i mean the two truths and a lie so the the lie was um he never stole anything out of macy so he's never had chick-fil-a sauce before and he did perform with new kids on the block once before so just a icebreaker, but that was the name of his sermon. So he opened it up with that game. And then we went to, for the scripture, John chapter four, verses 19 through 24. So let's go to that. Um, and as he said in the beginning, um, before he read this, we are coming in the middle of this, this, this scripture is in the middle of a conversation um, with uh, Jesus and a woman. So she says, verse 19, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim that it's here on my, Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worship. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews, but the time is coming, indeed it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so who for God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And so that was the opening scripture. Um and let me go back to my notes. So we start to talk about um discernment and tr truth telling and knowing when someone is telling the truth. And we I put my at my first um, point is God gives you discernment because everything you see with your natural eye will not be true. It's your knowing. So your discernment is your knowing. Um, and we started talking about that because in that scripture, if we go back, it says, um, in verse 23, it says, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth. And he asked a question or posed the question, why did Jesus have to say true worshipers? What was the point of him just not just saying there's going to be a time, the time is now when worshipers um, will worship the father in spirit and truth. Instead of saying that, he said true worshipers. And he said that because not everybody you see is worshiping. Like we get so um, caught up in what it looks like to be a Christian, what it looks like to serve God. And sometimes you see people doing things and they're doing it out of routine. Like he talked about being a preacher's kid. And sometimes you grow up in a church and you know the Bible, you know the word, and you also know church. You know when to clap your hands, you know when to stump your feet, you know when to catch the Holy Ghost, like you know when to be filled. Like, and so it can be a, a, um, a show or a, you know like whatever it's not necessarily the feeling that you have or true worship and so when he's talking to the samaritan woman and she's like how come you jews think that you're supposed to worship here when we worship here and he's like it really don't matter where you're worshiping like as long as you're worship, worshiping in spirit and truth and are you worshiping in spirit and truth like are you doing it out of habit are you doing it because that's what you're supposed to be doing are you doing it because that's what you you were told i'm supposed to worship here it, at this place and if I worship here at this place then all is well no because if you're hard in it if it's not true worship then you might as well not do it at all and no matter where you do it um I also put true worshipers and fake worshipers look the same but the time will come when true worshipers will be called and that's in that same scripture like he talked about sometimes we may be intimidated as like baby Christians or wherever, um, when you go to church and you see people with their hands up or you see people crying and you see people, um, shouting or you see all this and 
we may be intimidated because we don't feel like that in our spirit. Like we don't feel like, I don't, I don't feel like I don't, it's nothing in me telling me to jump. It's nothing telling me here to cry. It's nothing telling me here to yell. But a lot of people are doing that and it ain't nothing telling them to do that either. So like, ask God for discernment. Ask God to, to feel you. Ask God to, to meet you where you are. But just because people, other people are doing that in church, think about to what we talked about at the beginning, two, two truths and a lie. Like, it's a couple people in there that's lying. More than a couple, maybe. Some people are literally just doing it because that's what church is to them. That's what they've seen growing up. And it's not, they're not, they don't have any malice doing it. That just don't mean it's real because you see them doing it, if that makes sense. Um, I put, don't worship out of ritual, worship out of relationship. Um, and he talked about there are certain people who come to the altar and they cry and they do all this because of their relationship with God. They know what God brought them out of. They know um, that, what they're thanking God for, what they're believing in God for. So like their relationship with God is like, it's like a praise, it's a worship that they're giving him for all that he's done, all that he's going to do and who he is in their life. Like, so you don't worship because I'm in church and they play this song and it got this beat and it got like, you know, this kind of chorus and it's upbeat or whatever. You're not worshiping because of music. You're not worshiping because of where you are. You're worshiping because of your relationship with him and what you know he's capable of doing and what he's already done for you. We then went to 1 Samuel 16, verse, uh, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. So let's go to that. And so this reads, um, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And going back to what we just said, just reiterating that, like we judge people like, dang, she must really be close to God or God really must have moved in her life or God, she really has this relationship with him. I can't wait till I'm at that point. Like, and it's because you see what's happened on the outside of her, but like God doesn't look at that. Like God doesn't, he wants your praise. He wants your worship, but he's not looking for that he's looking for your heart like is your heart pure is your heart good is your heart after him like or are you just in ritual like god doesn't care about those those things that we see he doesn't care about all that screaming and hollering and jumping and shouting if it ain't real and if you if it's not coming from the heart he looks at it says people judge by outward appearance but the lord looks at the heart so it just reiterated what we said i said um put in my notes some people are impressed uh, some people, the, some of the people we are impressed with, God has rejected them. The Lord is looking at the heart. What is the state of your heart like? So again, we see a lot of people, even the people we look to in the Christian community or like these people on podcasts or whatever, like we look and we're so impressed by how strong their faith is and, um, how strong their walk is and this, that, and the third, but we don't know their heart. We don't know if all these people are pure and it's not up to us to judge them or even to, um, investigate that. Like we just got to make sure our heart is good and that we are in good relationship with God. Um, and so then we went into, you know, he always give us some, some notes to take, um, some like for sure notes to take, like I, I'd be writing them in between, but like he gave us three truths about worship. And so the first one is Worship isn't about location, it's about desperation. Uh, I put worship is not just about being in church or where you're sitting in the church. So he talks about this all the time and I feel like he was talking to me because that is something I really struggle with and I'm just being honest. I don't wanna sit in overflow. I feel like, and everybody needs something different when they you know, are in church, like you may need to, you may need music, you may need it, but his whole point of saying this and he gonna get to that too, like um, worship is about your relationship and about, how you and God, how locked in y'all are. So it's not about if you're sitting in overflow, it says as a true worshiper, there's no such thing as a right location. Um, it, it's a sacred site. So it went back to that opening scripture, like where she's asking Jesus, like, well, y'all say that we're supposed to worship here, but we say we're supposed to worship there. And he like, it don't matter where you are, like wherever you worship him is a sacred site. So make sure your worship is just genuine wherever it is. Make sure you locked in and you tuned in and you like, your eyes and your ears are open. It don't matter if you're in overflow. It don't matter if you're on a mountain. It don't matter if you in the field. It don't matter where you at. As long as you, you are giving the worship, you're giving him the praise and it's genuine. And I get that. I, I, I get, I get what he's saying. But for me right now, my worship, I need something to, I be needing that song. I be needing, um, to be in the room. I need to feel the energy. Like, I agree with that, but also like what's the verse in the Bible say where one or two are joined? I feel like it sometimes it matters when you can feel the energy 
where you are. Like if, and the old phone be popping, but I need, y'all get what I'm saying. I just need to be in the room. I need to be in the room. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, if I put fake worshipers need convenience to worship God, there's no such thing as comfortable worship. This is why it's called sacrifice of praise. And it's just going back to that, like, um, Sometimes people, going back to what I just said, sometimes people who are doing all that shouting and stuff in their room, it's fake worship and they just doing it because they hear the music and they hear other people yelling and stuff. I ain't fake praising. Like sometimes I'm just still sitting there quiet, but I need that. Like I need um, to feel the anointing off of other, what I feel like is anointing. Now, whether y'all fake, that's on God to judge your heart. But I feel like sometimes I need to see how other people are surrendering and how other people are thanking God. And not that I need that to be thankful myself, but just to feel the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To be filled with like gratitude, to see what, how he's working in other people's life. And again, you could be faking it. But to me, it's like, dang, God I really be doing that. Like, and maybe I'm contradicting what he's saying in the message and what I'm feeling. But this is what I felt as I was listening to the message and as I thought it over the last couple of days. Um, uh, so it put, we went to uh, Psalms 51 and 17 after that. So let's go to Psalms 51 and 17 says the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit you will not reject a broken and re you will not re reject a broken and repentant repentant heart oh god um so we went to talk about uh going back like we put that in there but then he went back to like not be having a not being in a convenient location or not liking the location you're in and he talked about like um when you're dating somebody you don't care what y'all do on the date or you don't care where y'all are um, you just want to be around them. The location don't, doesn't matter. You just want to be in their presence. And that's how it should be with God. And I wholeheartedly agree. But sometimes I feel like you have to build that. I enjoy being with God in my room. I enjoy reading the Bible. I enjoy listening to my sermons. But sometimes when it comes to worship and praise, like I need to be around. I need the atmosphere to be set. Like, And I feel like if that didn't matter, there would be no worship music at church. Like, you know what I mean? Like it wouldn't be no praise and worship. I feel like that matters to me. Y'all feel where I'm coming from on that? Like, I get it. You should be able to worship God wherever you are. If you're in a car by yourself, and you're in a closet by yourself, if you're in a room by yourself, if nobody else is worshiping them, you should be able to worship them. But I don't think that it's necessarily fake worship if you need a little bit more than the next person because that's what ignites your worship. I don't, that's just me. Um, and when it's real, the conditions doesn't matter. Learn to worship in uncomfortable places. And that was the first point. The second was worship isn't a song, it's a surrender. And again, that's going back to like, you don't necessarily need a, a the song to be hit. And you don't necessarily need the band or the person on the keys to be playing the best. Like, it's a surrender of your life, of your heart, of your mind, of all things. That's what worship is in that moment. Um, the song isn't supposed to be an expression of, the song is supposed to be an expression of a life that is surrendered to God. It's the soundtrack. It's not the... We don't necessarily watch a movie for the soundtrack of the movie. We watch the movie for the plot. We watch the movie for the characters, whatever. And the soundtrack is just an added bonus. I get that. Um, worship is a funeral. You're laying something down. And this is where um, I started to feel like, why? Let me just finish going my points first. Um, the moment you sacrifice your eyes at there's a ram in the bush waiting for you. If you don't give it to God, if you don't give God a life that is surrender, you're keeping your song. And so we started to talk about why a lot of people, when they worship and they are crying out, they are going through like what looks like a hard time or whatever. And it's because they're killing something. Like they're letting, they're sacrificing something, they're letting something go. And to me, I automatically thought about, um, I think it's Zacchaeus. And I think we talked about him recently, how, it was odd for him, God, to go to him at this meeting place and say, I'm coming to stay at your house because Zacchaeus was good. He was wealthy. Um, he was in, in the area. He was in his presence. But other people had sicknesses and other people had loved ones that were dying and needed God to, like, fix them. And Zacchaeus, he called on him and Zacchaeus didn't need these things. He was known as a wealthy man and wealthy people didn't have problems. And that was interesting to me when we talked about him because it's like we always talk about how hard it is to follow Christ. Like if you're a believer, you're going through all this horrible stuff and it's like, 
are you really trying to convince me that I should be doing this? Are you trying to tell me that I shouldn't be following? Because if, if it come with all this, then why on earth would I want to get involved and follow Christ if I'm going to just have all these headaches and I'm going to have to be hollering and crying and killing stuff left and right, like, and letting stuff go and surrendering everything that makes sense. Like I started to feel in church in the word, like, and as I thought about it over the week, like, I don't, that don't really sound too enticing. Like I don't want my worship to be a funeral. I just want to pray some fool, all the good stuff. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like that don't, that don't really sound too appetizing to me. Um, so after he said that, like, if you don't give God a life that is surrendered, you can, you can keep your song. I said it wrong earlier. Like, um, the moment you sacrifice your Isaac, there's a ram in the bush waiting for you. So when you sacrifice, there's good coming, but you have to give up something is what he was saying there. And if you don't give God a life that is surrendered, you can keep your song. So you can keep all that, that praise and that worship and that singing and that dancing and the moving of your feet, all that. If you, if you don't give him a life that is surrendered. Um, and so Matthew chapter 15 verses eight through nine, we'll go there. Eight verse eight reads, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce for them. They teach man-made ideas as commands from God. So after that, I wrote, are you worshiping for him or for yourself? And it just goes back to the everything and what it looks like in church. Like some people are just doing this for themselves. They're doing it because it look good, because it sounds good. Some of these preachers and prophets and people that call themselves prophets are like, preaching a word and they know the Bible from front to cover, um, front to cover, from front to back. Um, but they aren't doing it because they want to bring people closer to God. They're doing it because they like the views on YouTube. They, you know, they like the notoriety. They like the popularity. Like you got to know what you're doing it for. Like, am I coming on YouTube because I really like to break down these scriptures? Yes. It helps me as I always tell y'all that. Or am I doing it because y'all say I really like it also, but I'm doing it for me more than anything. Like, are you worshiping God? Are you giving him praise for yourself or are you doing it for him? Um, I also put, you want the feeling you want the you want the feeling without having to pay the com cost of commitment. You like the feeling of being around God, but you don't want to commit to living a life with God. You can't have both. So it's that it's called, that goes back to how we say sometimes we don't take church back home with us. Like we like how it feels when praise and worship, and we hear the songs, and we in church, and everybody is like it's communion. But then you don't commit to that feeling. You go home, and your life is still just what it was before you went to church. Um, you got to give up something. If worship is a struggle, you ain't killed nothing yet. And again, he went back to talking about how during worship, you should be crying out. During worship, you should be letting something go. During worship, you should be killing something. Like, And that's that's people's outcry. That's people's outpour. Um, uh, he went, whether you follow God or not, you sacrifice something. You either sacrifice pleasure for God or you, if you sacrifice purpose for the devil. God can redeem time. And he went to turning the he went to the story about turning water into wine. And while that was a miracle in itself, the fact that God turned water into wine, um, he talked about the time of that. It takes time to make wine. So something that was supposed to take a long time took God a matter of seconds, matter of minutes. Um, and that's another miracle that isn't really like preached on when they talk about that. That was supposed to take a long time and he did it in a matter of minutes. Like God can turn around time. So you feel like you you went all this time and God probably don't want nothing to do with you now because you in your late thirties and you just not giving your life to Christ or what what have you, whatever you think, whatever timeline you think you on, like God can turn around time. And I agree with all that. Um, where I was like conflicted and it is about the, the killing something. And I guess I understand that. I understood it then. Like you got to give up a life that is not yours. Like you got to surrender to him. And then going back to, we went to the conference a couple weeks ago. Like I understand the surrendering of it, but I also feel like sometimes you can just praise God for God being God and for him being who he is in your life. And not necessarily because I'm going through a sickness or I'm going through my family is it's falling apart or I lost my job or my finances aren't good. Like, I don't feel like every time you're at the altar, every time you're worshiping, and maybe this isn't what he meant. Um, but I just, I felt like I need to like ponder on that for a little bit. Like, I don't think it should always have to be like a, a worship shouldn't always be a sacrifice. Sometimes worship could be a celebration. Um, that's my thoughts. Um, the third point was worship isn't about your feelings. It's about your faith. faith. Feelings are to be led, not follow. I've heard that several times. Um, feelings are fickle. 
don't let your feelings determine your obedience. So we're not going to always feel like going to church. We're not going to always feel like reading the Bible. We're not going to always feel like journaling or praying. Um, but it ain't about what you feel like. It's about what you know you have to do. Don't let that determine your obedience. We went to Psalms 34 and 1. Um, let's go to that real quick. And 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. And I just put in quotations here. Um, I will bless the Lord at all times. It's not about, it didn't say I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. I will bless the Lord when I feel good. I will bless the Lord when I'm happy. I will bless the Lord when I look cute. I will bless the Lord at all times. Like no matter what you're going through, no matter if you are sacrificing something or if you're celebrating something, at the end of the day, you should just be blessing the Lord. You should be praising him and you should be worshiping him at, at all costs. So all in all, good message, right? I definitely understood what he was saying and that's about like being able to be a deep thinker like and being able to agree with somebody but still have your own like questions and thoughts and concerns and so that's what I took away with it. I'm like okay that was a good message but again I was kind of conflicted on why, why we gotta why I gotta be a, such a, a struggle though like why I gotta be so heavy like why we gotta be killing something like why can't we just like okay that wasn't for me and walk away from it like why can't God just deliver it? you from it. And so I sat with that for a couple of days. And then, uh, later that week, I was just happened to be on YouTube and I'm like, I didn't listen to Sarah since I came back from the conference. Like, I want to hear a little bit of Sarah. Oh, my book all messed up. I want to hear a little bit of Sarah Jakes. And so I feel like this message was the answers to my questions about BP's message. And so, um, if you haven't seen it yet, it's a message on YouTube. It's called shift the weight. Um, in Sarah Jakes Roberts and um she talks about and I'm not gonna read all my notes in here because I just gave y'all a 21 minute <laughs> sermon summary but basically she talked about how she did some research and y'all have to read y'all have to listen to her because she got the the real research notes and all this but she talked about how um she did research on airplanes and back in the day when they first started building airplanes or when airplanes were first, you know, invented, like they couldn't go long distance and they couldn't go very high. Like they had to start putting more weight onto planes in order for them to go bigger distance. And then they had to start giving them bigger tanks so they could have gas and the heavier the plane, the higher it could go. Y'all see where I'm going with it? And so she talked about how sometimes all weight isn't bad. Like you can still soar with heavy weight and that's what God wants you to do. Sometimes he's building you up and things can feel heavy and they can feel like you're killing something. They can feel like you're sacrificing something, but he's making you stronger for where he's about to take you next. So while PB was saying like, if your worship, if you're struggling to worship, you ain't killed something yet. You ain't put on the weight that God wants you to put on just yet. Like he's feels like it feels like it's weighing you down what he wants you to surrender what he wants you to kill but it's really so you can soar to the next level um I put in her notes you got to be heavy to go the height and again that's going back to her her um correlation with the plane like the plane if it's not heavy enough it's not going to be able to go in the altitudes it needs to go in like you have to be heavy sometimes so you can take off um God is calling you to withstand elements. He's scaling you. To, he's calling you. To, God is calling you to withstand the elements. He's, hold on. God is calling you to withstand elements. He's calling you to. You can't do what he needs you to do and be a lightweight. So going back to PB, I just feel like this message, she made it clear to me what he was trying to say. Like where God is taking you, you're going to have to know what it feels like to surrender and kill some things. Like you can't be a lightweight. Like your praise is going to have to be, really a one like your relationship is really gonna have to be a one like you're gonna have to have the armor on to go where he's taking you to go so while it feels like right now you're killing something and you you your worship is about that like later on it is gonna be a celebration because you're gonna know what it feels like to surrender that and let God handle it um I put the greater the altitude the altitude the longer the distance the heavier the weight the higher you want to go the longer you want to go the longer you want your your journey to be or your your success to be whatever the heavier the weight is going to be on you and you got to know how to her whole message was shift the weight you got to know how to carry the weight with you and know that it's not the weight isn't there to hold you down the weight is there to help you at the end of the day um you need the weight to go the distance. He's teaching you how to manage weight so you will have endurance. 
That's the thing. Like, this is going to help your endurance. It's going to help your stamina. It's going to help you stay in the game way longer than you would have if you didn't have the weight on you if you didn't have the have the sacrifice if you didn't surrender the greater the height the greater the weight um and she talked about like for an example promotions like new weight equals new responsibility so the higher god is going to take you you're going to have more responsibilities and you got to know how to handle those responsibilities or the weight um so like a promotion when you get promoted yeah it's all fine and then you got more money but you also got more responsibilities like are you able to handle those responsibilities like or is it going the weight gonna crush you the, the weight of these responsibilities gonna crush you and they may crush you if you didn't ask god to equip you or they may crush you if you didn't surrender things that you should have surrendered to him like your time management or whatever it is or i don't know if you don't have the necessary tools in your toolbox weight can definitely crush you um we went to Luke 12, which is, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. God is going to bless you. Like, that's a given. He Every morning we wake up is a blessing. But, like, to whom much is given, much is required. Your praise just at the end of the day, your blessings are going to cost you something. And going back to what PB said, it's either your sacrifice um, of pleasure or your sacrifice of uh, purpose. Like, if you don't give your life to God, if you don't surrender it to God, you your pleasure or whatever you're going to sacrifice your purpose and what he has for you like this is ask him to help you carry the weight and you'll get to where you're supposed to get um but it's it's a, going to be something required of you just like anything else like going back to the job like yeah you're being promoted yeah you're getting the coin you get into the bag but like it costs you something to whom much is given much is required now you got to you got people directly reporting to you now you got to you go to the meetings that you didn't have to go to before. Now you got to create these reports that you didn't have to create before. Now you got all these new responsibilities, but you're getting something that you want at the end as well, right? Um, there's some things that only you can do because God gave you the capacity to do so. Um, there's a height only you can go to, so he put that weight on you. Your, your weight is heavier for you because only you can go where he's trying to take you to go why you might look at somebody else and be like dang it don't feel like they have to give up nothing they don't feel like they're going through nothing they haven't surrendered nothing it's because god ain't taking them where he want to take you um uh what else i want to say about this because like i said i'm not gonna read all of this but i want y'all to know that like this sermon helped make the other sermon give me clarity about the other sermon because while i thought pb was good i'm like i just don't understand why we gotta why i gotta be heavy though but listening to sarah I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Like, it's not going to always feel good, but it's necessary at the end of the day. Like, you got to have that weight on you for you to go the heights that you got to go. It is just is what it is. Like, but it ain't going to always be heavy. Like, once you once you get up there, it feel a little lighter because all the elements work together. I don't know about the planes. You got to ask Sarah about the planes or research them for yourself. But once the plane take off, the heaviness and the the weight of the sky i guess i don't know <laughs> it all works together for your good get it i get it um uh what else? i feel like i got some notes in here mm. but the weight isn't the problem the faith is the problem if you believe in him you can carry any weight and that's just why i believe y'all that mic drop I thought that was good. I thought that was very good. So y'all got a two for one today. Y'all got PB and y'all got Sarah. But um, I thought it was important for me to kind of share my like issues I had with PB sermon because that's what it's about to continue to um, growing your faith in your walk, you're going to have questions. You're not going to agree with everything, but you got to ask God for clarity and you got to be receptive to like, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, but let me figure out why I don't get it. And let me go try to find the answers. And honestly, I didn't try to go find them. I was just like, mm, I, I like that message, PP, but it's, I got questions. And then I feel like God gave that to me. Like I could have watched any other sermon that had nothing to do with nothing. Like it could have been talking about, I don't know, but I feel like that directly correlated with his message and it made me understand more. And that was just perfect. But I'm, I'm going to leave it there with y'all. Hope that made sense for you. Hope you understood where I was coming from and why I was conflicted and how her message like really 
help me. Um, but yeah, I've been talking for about 30 minutes now and this vlog is getting kind of long. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it on out. If you made it this far in the vlog, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're a new subscriber, I hope I've earned your subscription. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, I hope you enjoyed everything that we've done in this vlog so far. I seen another YouTuber doing this and I'm just curious. So I want to do it too. If you made it to the end, tell me your favorite tell me your favorite gospel song in the comments and that will just let me know who's made it to the end what my analytics are looking like um i want to know your favorite gospel song it could be old it could be new your favorite gospel song or gospel artist y'all already know i'm rocking with tasha that's my girl that's my girl um so let me know yours again thank you so much for watching thank you so much for tuning in and um until next time Bye. Oh, don't forget to go to TikTok so y'all can see how I put on these clothes. I don't know if it's going to be a styling video or just a try on, but go to TikTok. Go to TikTok. See y'all later.